Well, hey, my friends, welcome back. Today, I wanted to have a little sit down discussion with you um, about the stages of ceramic, because this is a question I get a lot, actually, like what thing to do at which stage. It's all the stuff that's going on in the background. And it's really important that you start to understand the process that clay goes through so you can really get a grasp of like what to do at each stage and master each step in your pottery journey. So let's get started. So the first keyword I want to talk about is greenware. Now greenware is all clay that hasn't been fired yet. So it goes from, you know, fresh clay straight from the bag all the way to a finished pot, but that hasn't been fired yet. All of this is called greenware. So within the greenware category, we're going to be going from wet to dry because this is really uh, what puts everything in each category is how wet it is or how dry it is. So of course we'll be starting with slip. Slip is simply very wet clay. Um, it's clay that has a lot of water in it. It's like liquid and it is used for all kinds of things. So maybe you've heard of the term slip casting. Um, this is the process of pouring uh, liquid clay, so slip, into a mold to make finished pottery. Slip is also used in the process of slipping and scoring. I mean, we talk about that a lot in this channel. You can also add stain to a slip to make an end gobe. You can use it for a slip trailing. It's something that you're just gonna have around in your clay studio. You'll also be making a lot of slip while you're throwing pottery on the wheel. You know when your water becomes really thick from all that throwing, uh, after you've thrown a few pots, it becomes like this thick goop. That's what slip is. So when slip becomes a little bit drier, uh, a lot of the water is removed, it becomes clay. So this is probably the material that you're most familiar with because you buy it like this. Clay is this wet stuff that can be manipulated, made into anything you want, but it's not liquid. It will hold its shape. Uh, you can pinch it and yeah, form it into a pot. There's of course a range within this category. There's like the uh, really sloppy stuff <laughs> that you get right after you're reclaiming your clay, all the way to like really hard stuff that, you know, you left in a bag in the corner of your studio and forgotten about and now you have to wedge. All this is clay, of course. What's important to know is this is the stuff that you're going to be creating with, uh, whether hand building or on the wheel. So once you've made your pot and it's become a little bit drier, uh, we call this leather hard. Now I'm not gonna get into the like minor controversy of what to call leather hard. Some people just call it leather and they reserve the word leather hard for when it's on the harder side and then there's soft leather. I'm not gonna get into that. This is what I call it. I call everything in this stage leather hard and then there's like a soft leather hard or a hard leather hard. Um, but it's all within the leather hard category. So just stay with me and stay out of my comments about this, please. So this is the stage that you want to uh, trim your pots. So I've already done this, but it's still leather hard. Uh, you want to add a handle um, and any sort of carving, slip trailing, adding underglaze, um, any of this stuff you want to do in the leather hard stage. So I check for leather hardness in two ways. Um, the first way is I just like handle it and if it can kind of, I can like move it around and it's not going to collapse on itself, that means it's leather hard. If it's gonna hold your fingerprints, um, that means it's not quite leather hard. So you should be able to touch it and not have clay coming off on your hands or not leave an indent from where you're touching it. However, it shouldn't be too dry. So what I like to do is I will kind of manipulate the rim a little bit I just like squish it a little bit. And do you, do you see how like the rim is actually moving? It's just a tiny, tiny bit. Maybe you can't see it, but the rim is moving just a touch. Um, this is the perfect leather hard stage. You don't want it super flexible because you'll damage your pot. And also like you won't be able to carve into it while it's still wet or add a handle or anything. So you want to be able to move it ever so slightly, but not very much. So <laughs> a huge question I get a lot is how long to wait between clay and leather hard? Like how long does that take? I'm sorry, I cannot answer this question for you. It the, the reason is it depends on so many things. So it depends on uh, how much water you added to your clay while you were making your pot, um, the climate in your area, how hot or how cold it is, the humidity in your area, the humidity in your room, if there's a draft in your room, if there's like a fan going on somewhere, um, all of these things are going to affect how long it takes something to dry. Um, but I will give you an example uh, in my studio space. If I leave my pots out overnight uh, in summertime, they'll be way too hard to trim by the next morning. I never do that. I'll always put some plastic over them. Um, but in the wintertime, when the studio is quite cold, uh, I can do that and they'll be like perfect by the next morning. 
We also have a cellar in our studio and that has a totally different like humidity, coolness uh, environment than the upstairs studio. So um, sometimes I'll put stuff down there when I want it to dry slower. They'll dry faster in our kiln room versus like in the main studio space. So um, it's really just trial and error. You know, err on the side of your pots drying too slow, but just kind of like watch them over time. Use the techniques that I just explained to figure out when is the right stage. It really will take like from a few hours to overnight, maybe a day, I don't know. But if you leave them under plastic, they can stay quite a long time. And actually I'm about to record another video on drying that will come out probably a week after this video. Definitely watch that if you want to like learn like how to control the drying between clay and leather hard and bone dry. Okay, I've talked enough about leather hard. Let's get to the next step and that is bone dry. So this step is pretty easy. Um, this just means that the clay has completely dried out. So there's no more water in this pot. This is the most fragile stage that your pots are ever going to be in. So if I drop it from like this height, <laughs> it's totally gonna break. Like you need to be really fragile with this piece. And this is why transporting pottery can become so difficult. If you can transport pottery, I recommend transporting it in the leather hard stage, um, but that's something else for another video. So the important thing is that when your pot is bone dry, this is when you want to be putting it into the kiln for the bisque. You want to make sure that it's completely dried out uh, before you put it in the kiln because this is the main reason why things crack or explode in the kiln. So now these are the four stages of greenware that we just went through. So slip, clay, leather hard, bone dry. All of these stages, you can kind of cycle back and forth between them um, by adding or removing water. But once your pot goes into the kiln for the first time, it becomes something totally different. It's a chemical transformation from this to this. So unless you're doing single fire ceramics, your bisque will be the first firing. We fire at 900 degrees Celsius. Um, there's a range in there, of course, but um, it's more or less that temperature. And I just wanted to say another question that I get really often is, can I do this in my oven, my oven at home? No. You cannot. Uh, I'm gonna link down below my other video on where you can find a kiln in your area because I'm talking 900 degrees Celsius. So anyway, the bisqueware is the stage that you want to be glazing your pottery on. You can skip the bisqueware stage if you are just like not having any glaze at all. Um, this is like the whole reason for bisque is so that you can glaze your pottery. I also like to do a bit of sanding uh, during the bisqueware stage because it's still quite um, fragile. I don't recommend you doing very much sanding. And when I do sanding, I do what's called wet sanding. I'll do another video on that as well. If you're going to sand, I would do it in this stage, not in the greenware stage. And the reason why I want to discourage you from sanding too much is because um, the dust is really harmful for your lungs. Um, so if you're gonna sand, you definitely wanna do what's called wet sanding and wear a respirator. So once your bisque wire is glazed and it's going back into the kiln for the second time, uh, then it will magically become ceramic. So this is the final stage that we're all trying to get to with pottery, obviously. This is finished ceramic. Depending on your clay, um, this temperature is going to be different. We're firing stoneware, so we fire generally at 1250. But anyway, it will be a higher temperature than the bisque because what's important at this stage is that your clay vitrifies. And vitrification is just a really fancy word for the particles of clay melting together. Um, so this is when your pot becomes waterproof. It's not the glaze that makes it waterproof. The clay itself has to become waterproof. And there's different levels of vitrification. Some clays can never become vitrified. This is earthenware. Um, so they'll always be a little bit leaky. This is why I recommend earthenware more for like planters and like, non-functional, like non-tableware objects. And no, you cannot, again, <laughs> vitrify your clay in the oven. It's not possible. At this stage, some people will also sand the bottoms of their mugs again, because sometimes like the kiln wash can stick to the bottom of your mugs. I only do that if it's necessary, if there is like a chunk or something sitting on there, but I'm a hashtag lazy potter. I mean, I don't really see the need otherwise. Like I kind of like this raw uh, surface. That's why I use it a lot in my pottery. Um, this pot specifically, you can see, I've only glazed the inside and the rim. This is actually raw clay covered with an end gope. And this is the pure clay color, same on the bottom. Um, so that's it, these are the six stages of pottery. I hope that that was helpful for you. I mean, I always tell my students that they need to kind of get through the whole process from you know clay to finished piece once. Just get, go through it once before you even like start to understand like what each stage is. So I know it's it's a little confusing, but once you've got it, like it's really straightforward in the end. You also sort of get a feel for the clay. There is of course so much to learn about each individual stage. I could do like 
a video or more <laughs> on each individual stage because there's so many options out there. Um, there's so many things to like know about the material. Um, so let me know if you want me to cover that topic, but hopefully this overview gives you kind of like a overview <laughs> so you can get started and just jump right in. Yeah, that's it for me today. Um, if you want to learn more about me and my studio, you can find me over at Potter to the People on Instagram. And otherwise, I hope you have a lovely day. It's like spring in Berlin. I'm so happy. So uh, I'm gonna go outside now. Uh, bye friends. <laughs>